Hello, and welcome to a quick tutorial on how to use the Spark AR audio analyzer. <laughs> and so what is the audio analyzer? Well, it's this new patch graph in version 89 that is going to take any audio input and separate it into frequency bands that then we could use to manipulate anything in the scene. So in this case, nothing is happening because the microphone input doesn't actually work yet in the app. So you have to mirror the effect to your Instagram camera. Um, or if you have your device connected, you could do a mirror to your Instagram player um, to see it working if, if the microphone is the input. So we want to see it working just so that you can understand. So I'm going to take this audio player input and then you can see what's happening. So I'm using the different frequencies, the mel bands of that audio, that audio clip here that is being played. And I'm using each range of frequencies called a mel band to drive a part of the effect. So first, let's just understand the mechanics of setting it up, because that's what most of you are here for. You're not here for the technical rundown of how it all works. So this is how to set it up. You go to Project, then you go to Edit Properties, and you make sure that your Facebook platform is not selected. So you deselect it. So this audio analyzer at the moment of making this video only works for Instagram. So you select Instagram only, press done. Then you're going to add a speaker. So you're going to go to right click and add, and you're going to find speaker here and click on that. That will add a speaker. So after you've added a speaker right here, um, you're going to go and right click in the patch graph to find the audio analyzer. And there it is. You add it in there. And then you're going to drag the microphone, which is right here, into the patch graph and connect it to the audio. Then after the microphone, it's connected to the audio. You're going to click on that newly added speaker, find it in the right panel, and click this arrow so it adds the yellow patch, and then connect the audio output to that speaker yellow patch. So what you're doing is you're creating a link between the audio source and the speaker that is outputting that audio. So if you don't do this step, then the rest of the bands aren't going to do anything. So now what's happening here where it takes the different bands? What are these different bands? How do they work? Well, they start at a low frequency and they encapsulate a predefined window of time and the change of values within that range, within that band, uh, throughout time. So you've got the lowest band is band one, all the way to the highest frequency, tonal-wise, which is band eight. So mel frequencies, not to get too far into it, but as I love the technical details, the way that they work is that they have a slope that is defining the change throughout time. That slope has a peak, and that peak is equally defined throughout time across each band. So when you're driving different changes in the effect, what you want to do is you want to make sure that you have a uniform range that is coming out of each band. And to do that, uh, I've provided this handy dandy block um, that I actually got 
from being in the Facebook London hackathon, but I modified it a little bit to suit our needs. <clears throat> but it's important to understand how this block is working. So what's happening here is your typical clamp uh, and two range block. So it's taking the values that are coming in and it's remapping them so that they are more usable. So each band comes in and it's given a max range. <clears throat> Excuse me. Given a max range, um, then it's remapped so that its starting value is at zero and ends at one, and it's clamped so that the values don't exceed zero and one. <clears throat> and then it's outputted using a swizzle. So the swizzle here is acting as a gate to send the right number of vectors to drive an effect. So if you have a scale that you want to change the scale of a 3D object, you are going to take the swizzle and make sure that it has three vectors. And if you want the sound to change the values on the Y axis so that it stretches upward, you're going to make it so that the first value is a constant one. The second value is the changing value, which is Y. And the third value is one again. So that means the values that are changing as you see them are going to just be that Y. And so that's what's happening here. I've got some 3D objects and I've connected their scale. In this case, it's the, the letters of a 3D word called tonality, because that's what is happening here. <laughs> so the T 3D scale gets manipulated only on the Y axis by the changes of the remapped audio analyzer. So hopefully all of that makes sense because this is how you're going to go in and change these values to do different things in your effects. So if you wanted to say, um, manipulate a texture, you would change it to a two vector and you might want to manipulate the X and Y of that, um, whole 2d vector. Uh, so stretch it on the X and Y axis. So you're going to put in X, X and X here is representing any signal coming out of this patch graph and then converting it to the two vectors that you want to drive. So in that case, you would have a 2d transform pack and you would say, I want to scale it. And then you would need to add also a transform. And that texture transform is going to take in your new texture. So you would define a texture, um, then it would stretch it out because it's scaling it because that swizzle is sending two values of that um, audio analyzer. <laughs> I need to turn these off. Uh, where's my settings? <laughs> okay. So turned it off. So that's how the EQ music analyzer block is functioning. So I'm not going to save any of those changes. We're just going to go back and I'm going to show you how it's going to work. So say you want to just test and see how the music analyzer is understanding signals um, within your Spark AR simulator. So you can't do it with the microphone input, but you can do it with an audio player. So I've gone ahead and added one here and I've connected it to a screen tap. So now you can see 
the changes in each Mel band, this is the lowest change and all the way up to the highest frequency, all eight of them are doing different values of scale. So remember how we set the scale to manipulate only on the Y axis? So it's scaling that 3D object up and down on the Y axis, dependent on the change of each of those frequency ranges. So how did I add this music sample? Well, I took it from the AR library. So I go into Add Asset, and I click Import from AR library, and I click Audio. And there is all of this audio samples. Um, and I import one that I like. And then I'm going to click on it here in the Asset Inspector. And I'm going to then, oh. So now that you've added that AR Media Library sound effect, you want to click on that sound effect, see it here, and you can see there's a quick action uh, selection here that says Add Multi-Clip Patches. So that's going to add what you need in the effect to effectively play that audio clip. So here it's added it. And it also adds a speaker, which we don't need. So you can see here it adds a multi-clip controller and an audio player. And it also adds that audio clip connected to the audio clip input of the audio player. So you'll get these three patches. The multi-clip controller is going to play the audio every single time a pulse comes into it. And then that output is going to go to our music analyzer. So we take this out and we put it into the audio input, the music analyzer. You can see it's being driven by a screen tap. By screen tap, I get beautiful music. So I've got the lowest band of the audio and then all the way up to the highest band. So I'm going up. Um, you could see here the, the changes in those values are being shown dramatically um, in accordance with how the spectrograph is showing. So here you've got a spectrograph that's showing the changes in the values of the frequencies throughout time. So there's a window and it's being separated by each Mel band, each specific frequency range. And it's going through and driving a size change on the Y axis. So all these 3D objects are being driven to change only on the Y. And why are they being driven to change only on the Y? <laughs> well, because we set them here in this block uh, 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 to only scale. Ba, 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 ba. Let's zoom out, zoom, zoom, zoom. Only scale on that Y axis. So if it would zoom here. Uh, uh, could see it's coming out of that clamp it's scaling on the y-axis this is x y and z and it's driving each change of those 3d bars and it's driving their scale in this case it's driving a null that is driving the scale so that null can then drive the size change of anything under it as a child so that's how it's working. And so every time you click here, it's going to change. And so maybe you're wanting some sort of loop. You're going to want to make an, an, an animation loop that is triggering that pulse multiple times because 
it's not going to work if you don't have a event source. So the original time that that audio is being triggered, it has to be set to zero. So it has to reset as an event that starts every time to be recognized by the audio analyzer. And the reason I say that is because I know there's a lot of people that are gonna go in and they're gonna look at their audio clip and they're just going to try to loop it um, and it's not gonna work. So they're gonna look here and they're gonna be like, oh, I wanna loop that. And they're gonna select loop and it's, it's not going to drive the change. So that's why. Um, what other things that, that we want to do here though? Well, we want to use the microphone input and like I said before, the microphone input isn't going to work as a live preview in the simulator. So you're going to want to test it by sending it to your Instagram camera and pressing record. That's the kicker there. It only works on Instagram and it only works on record. So you as a new user, you're going to want to know that the effect is only going to happen when you press record. So we're going to add that custom instruction so that all of your users know that it's not going to work until they press record. So we're going to go into capabilities and in there, we're going to find instructions. Well, first we're going to, it's not going to be there. We're going to click add and we're gonna type in instructions, then we're gonna add instructions, then it'll be here, like it is. And you're gonna click on custom instructions, you're gonna select two tokens, say something, because we're using the microphone input, and press to launch. And you click and you add them, they show up here, you can see the token, and you're gonna click done. So how do we get this to work in the way that we want it to? And you can kind of see where I'm going with this. So I've got it in here, but we're going to click on device. And on the right side, we're going to click create custom instructions patch, and then click on instructions on opening. That's going to add automatically the things that we need, just like it did for the quick actions in the audio controller. It's gonna add the runtime, so that's the start of the effect and time as it marches on. And then a less than, which is logic, so f less than five seconds, this runtime is going to change whether the instructions are showing or not. And then this is the token we have for the instructions. So here it says, you have to tap and record to start. And that's great, but we also want to tell the user to say something. So here we've got a different conditional logic that says if this time from the start of the effect is less than two seconds, we're going to change something. And that something is a condition. So. The condition here is switching between two different operators. So one operator is one set of instructions that you want to show, which are press to launch. Second operator is the second set of instructions you want to show. So that one is going to be say something. So say underscore something that we've already added and those go into the token. And now the instructions are going to be showing on the screen for five seconds. Each set of them is going to show on the screen for two seconds because we're switching between the first thing and the second thing at that two second mark. So when I restart, tap and record and then say something and then they go away. <laughs> and so that's the end of my quick uh, and crazy tutorial on the audio analyzer. And if you like this, great. You could subscribe to my Patreon, that'd be awesome. Or 
you know, maybe you don't have that much money, and a lot of people don't. It's, it's uh, you know, the middle of a quarantine crisis, so you, you don't have any money. Um, that's fine. There's tons of free resources that me and, and Luke and Lassie and Josh have created in this GitHub. There's also going to be in the links, including this file, um, which you can use. So thank you.